So <clears throat> today I I try to always make a quick 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 review. If I don't forget before every every other lecture, I I do some quick review. We're gonna think about planning today and requirements and statement of work, which is kind of the formal phrase used in PMP for uh, the things that most of you said. Okay, and then scope also used a lot and WBS. Okay, today's topic. So I want you to use this in your uh, personal and academic. Uh, briefings, uh, presentations, discussions, okay? That's one kind of a review. What are some common themes in, in project management, right? So projects are temporary, they are unique, right? They have a beginning and an end. If you are, if you are going to the factory and you're just installing the tires, like I said, and then screwing all the screwdrivers, using screwdrivers to screw all the, you know, screws, then it's not a project. It's you, it's a routine that you're working, okay? It can be a part of the project, but what you're doing, just installing the tires is not a project, okay? So they should be unique. Uh, what's the triple constraints? You can write in the chat. Does anyone remember what was the triple constraints? Let's see, how did I, uh, yeah, what was the acronym that I used? Did you, do you remember? Yes, TSC, thank you, Ariel, yeah. I want you to remember TSC, okay? So TSC is my acronym, time, scope, cost. For cost, we also call it budget. Some other, some references will call it budget. Some will say schedule instead of time. Okay, requirements, they say scope. So they are all the same things, okay? And your budget will be the function of scope, schedule, and also budget too. So what does that mean? Like budget is a function of scope and schedule. Maybe I should take out the budget, but next time. What does it mean budget is scope and schedule function? quality chairs do you want like most of our classroom has like zoom recordings right now right during the COVID-19 before that we have a few but now almost almost all the classroom has zoom zoom recording capability and maybe more than half has the camera you know we can record students video and voice the schedule how does it affect the budget how, how come the schedule affect the budget? Then yes. it's more expensive, right? It's yes. more expensive because you have to hire more workers, double the workers, because you want to complete it faster, right? Yep. You got to make them work harder, like longer. Uh, so you you it it costs you more. Yeah, for expedited work, even with USPS, right? I was mailing an envelope yesterday, and they said if you want it to get there tomorrow, you got to give me twenty five dollar. Well, it was in Phoenix. Right, so expedited always called. It's the same for projects. All right, so I also want. I also, I was happy hearing, like students said, initiation planning. I I really wanted to hear that. And interface. One of the things you want to do is what happened in the previous projects, right? So you you want to go back to like previous projects and and get the lessons learned from there, right? That's one thing you, that you should do for everything. What happened next year, last year? How was the conference last year? What did the contractor do last year? Or you can even call the contractor and say, hey, this year view on the contract, what went wrong yesterday, I mean, last year with you, right? On time, they, they paid us our money, uh, they were always good, like they gave us free lunch, whatever, right? So you can get the previous experience. Never underestimate that, That never underestimate that, okay? Always start with lessons learned. <clears throat> All right, so I, I, I wanted to hear these and some of you already mentioned those, really good, so PM process. So then you need to plan the project. 
it's it may be as easy as furnishing a classroom like in your assignments you should plan the project right and you have to use this process in your project so we will talk about the planning today why don't we start with a kickoff meeting right so many of you said i would go to the if there's any if there's any previous work projects done i would like to see them maybe you have you already have a team of course right you have your own employees uh so why don't you you know start with a kickoff meeting and sometimes you need to because you will not be able to agree because not everyone will be there so perhaps you need a second one as well so here just everybody talks about what they what they need what they want their expectations and then they agree on what to do okay so it's always good to start with a kickoff meeting. We don't like planning if I if I may talk on behalf of you guys, okay? Planning takes time, it requires thinking, right? Uh, it involves paper, paperwork, you know, uh, like Ahmed said, they wanna document everything. So documenting means basically you're just documenting every idea, every design, and you are basically like, self-imposing some limitation on your team right and you have to plan systematically for example you have to use the project management steps right so we really don't like planning but we have to be in the planning process as an engineer okay to able to understand better the objectives what is the objective right what's the objective that's why in the beginning the first session i always said here are the expectations, what you should expect from my soft skills lectures. Here's what you should expect in my project management lectures. Reduce to uncertainty, right? So efficiency, monitor and control, responsibility and accountability. What is the need area for each team, right? For that, you got to gather the need area, right? We have to be involved. So as engineers, I know you know you like to sit in sit on your desk and then get your computer and code until the morning but that's not what you should do you have to get involved in the planning process okay engineers uh, the other the other domains wants engineer to be in the planning process as well because engineering costs money and I want you to be involved in the in the planning process as well. Don't just say, "Hey, you know, just tell me what do I need to do and I'll do it." Right? That's not that's not an approach that we should we should, you know, get. So we should be in the planning process. You can read this. Uh, you know, I'm including this just for your uh, information. It should be explicit, intelligible, flexible. Remember what I told you about the military, they are good at planning. They are even better at updating the plan. So you sh your plan should be flexible, right? Should be ex should be able to change, not fragile. For example, during COVID-19, uh, yeah, some universities just closed down their uh, physical students and then they completely went online because they couldn't like adapt the change. But what we, so you should be flexible and yeah. Can move us. requirements so there are statement of work and scope and schedule which we will cover next week and wbs okay work breakdown structure so here's my question to you could you you started your project and you are you are creating the classroom you, you started putting some physical work in it not only like post-its on the wall and then uh, you started ex executing some of the physical stuff. Uh, and then customer comes back to you and says, uh, let's pick one. Uh, let's say Wang, right? Wang. Uh, could you just quickly add this feature to the product as well, right? Whether it be a shopping cart, a classroom furnishing. What would you say, Wang? Would you just say yes, yes because they are your customer? Or would you say a big no because you started execution? Let's see. What would you say? So there's a reality. The customer is coming to you regardless of what phase, how much money you spent into the project, 
and they are asking you, they are customer, right? They can ask, right? What you have, you should always say that. We understand your concerns. What do you mean by this, right? Like Meng Wen said, maybe they want to add something, but what they want to achieve is something else. Remember the tire? They needed a tire, but they explained us differently, and then we understood differently. So maybe they want to add a feature, but they really want to ex accomplish something else, right? So that's one. The second one, something may, be, may seem easy to you as a project manager, but we don't have the expertise for toothpaste and the space shuttle and then the shopping carts and then the furnishing a classroom, right? We can't be expert in everything. So even though it looks simple to you all, you should say, I want to ask my team. Okay, so that's two things I want you to say. So not a yes, not a no. No, what you want to say is it, it does not depend. This is, this is what I want you to say. Give me a few days or weeks, right? Whatever is needed. I'll get back to you. Let me talk to my team. But before that, even you want to ask, what do you want with this feature? What, what, do you, what do you mean with this feature? Do you mean that? And do you mean that? And most of the time, Meng Wang, you will under, you will see that they don't even know what they're saying because it's possible that in a, in their own meeting, somebody said something and she she or he didn't really understand their manager. And then they just, they're just asking you like, just because they feel responsible and they want to ask. When, when you ask some questions, do you mean that? Do you mean this? Do you realize that this feature will block that feature? And then uh, they will say, oh, no, I, I really don't know these details. Let me go to my team and really see what we want, right? There you go. That's your job. Well, now there's the question. What do you think the customer will feel about your response? Let's continue with someone else who wants to volunteer. So people, because customer wants yes or no, right? Customer is always right. Is it? Are they? So what would they feel about it? What would they feel about it? They want to hear a yes, right? Or maybe they want to they want to hear a clear no. Well, I think the customer will feel okay. They will feel better than your yes and no most of the time because uh first of all you make them aware that they even don't know what they're asking, right? So that's a big revelation for them. Next time when they come to you, they will be more careful, more detailed, will do their homework. The second, if you, if you think something is simple and say yes, right? And then you go back to your team and they say, hey, this requires another 10,000 or we can't really do this because there's some federal regulations that are saying, I don't know, you know, customer database should be protected or whatever, whatever. Uh, and then you can't do it. And then now, a few weeks later, you went back to customer and say, you know what? I said yes, but I apologize. We can't do it because of these federal regulations. That's worse than saying, let me consult my team. Let's see what we can do. Okay. I really don't want you to, to say, to pronounce yes. And I don't want you to pronounce no, because if you say yes, the customer will not hear what you add later. They will only remember yes. If you say no and then say something, they will only remember no. So don't pronounce yes and no. Just say, I understand your concerns. Let me go back to your team. Because if you say yes and then say, but this requires this and that, they will only hear yes. Okay, so don't pronounce yes and no, no, please. Okay, let's go to chat. Yeah, the scope. So it really depends on like, what I want you to do is actively listen. What is the request? What type of project are you in? Are you building a skyscraper or you're just building a website, right? Because it really depends. Some, th some things are physical, some things are not. So they cannot just add one more one more uh, flat to the to the building, right? On one more floor to the building because there may be some 
uh, civic code, but you can add a search engine into the website or whatever, right? Maybe it's easier. Uh, what phase are you in? If you are almost delivering the website, you can say, you know what? That can be a, a good add-on to the next cycle or something, right? If you are doing the Scrum project management, like the agile project management, right? It's always iterative. So you can add more features. You can say, oh, maybe that's good for the next cycle, right? Not, not for this one, right? Because you are almost about to deliver. Is it achievable? within the timeline, right? What do you need extra? You know, if you say yes to customer and then go back and say, this requires a 10,000, and then the customer will say, oh no, because you said yes, I thought you could do it, right? But if you come back without saying yes, if you come back a few days later and say, here's the thing, I work with my team, we studied this, and then we need another month, and we need another 10,000. If you can do that, if you can provide us this, if you agree on this, we can do it. Then the customer will say, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we'll do it. And then they will be more happy, happier. Yeah? Understand what I mean? So they will like such project managers better. By the way, can your team accomplish it? Maybe you need to hire an external expertise for that, external vendor, right? So you gotta you gotta look at all these different aspects. Will it add any business value? And this brings me to the Meng Wang's first comment, right? They may say, tell us something, but is it adding a value? Uh, do they really mean what they say, or they mean something else, right? That's our job as a project manager to understand what they want. Okay, because uh, some is applied to a project manager. <laughs> so, for example, I just want to pick production, right? If we tell the production team their aim is lowest cost, right? If if you want them to uh, design a missile, they will produce the lowest cost. But then it would look like this, and it wouldn't work for us, right? So we should just combine all these perspectives, respect all these perspectives, and combine them and do our own analysis, like, like the in IDEO. Every, one looked at the safety, one looked at the cost, one looked at the convenience of shopping, and then they combined the best solution in all of them and combined them in one prototype, right? So never let it to any of the stakeholders like Ricky said, right? Well, if yeah. I... It, when it comes to statement of work, like it's really important, right? So he asked for the slides, doesn't get it. The printer is off. Right, all these guys, IT. Well, every time we call someone, they say our menu change. Right, no one says we have the same menu, so just choose it. No one, no one says that. They always say our menu has recently changed. So, statement of work. Anything that's not clear works for the customer, because customer is always right. Right. So, and what is the purpose? Right. What is the purpose to be achieved? What is the exclusions? What shouldn't be done, right? That's one thing that I want to see in the state law works as well. We usually focus on what we will do, but we don't really say what we want to. You should start doing this. You should include the things that you will not do to eliminate any assumptions. Like I said, if the customers hear yes, she will not hear anything else you said. If they hear no, they will not hear anything else you said. So you want to be clear that I'm not going to paint the ceilings, right? Ceilings are excluded from painting, which when you write this, you are, okay, if they want it painted, they will tell us now because they saw it. Otherwise, they will just assume that, hey, we told them to paint the classroom. Of course, ceiling is a part of the classroom. They're going to paint it. We assumed such, but it's not always the case, right? It's not always the case. So exclusions, I want to hear the exclusions. I want to read exclusions. Quantities, how many? Do I have one classroom, five classroom, 10 classroom? Is all classrooms or some are, is there any, are they all the same? Or do I have to do something? Like, do they have all the windows, all the doors, right? What are the quantities? What is the schedule? You want to say the schedule as well. Furnishing the classroom will be completed by this day, right? 
deliverables what are the deliverables because you cannot just deliver the whole project you should you should deliver it in chunks right so what is the deliverables and what are the time for the deliverables what's the acceptance criteria what's the acceptance criteria right so how are you going to hand over the classroom is the project manager office somebody from there will come and accept it uh i don't know maybe the case is we want the first lecture to be taught and then we want to get the feedback from professors and customers and then once you apply those feedback we're going to accept the project can you write that yeah right you you may write that as well so you got to what is the acceptance criteria okay and responsibility who's going to do what these are all parts of the s statement of work if you can't agree goals and objectives, that's a problem area. Everyone should be able to uh, agree. That's why exclusions are important because it eliminates the assumptions. Maybe the, uh, yeah, reduces the assumptions, let's say. So you should be able to change the uh, objectives as well. There should be sufficient time to do it. Anything that's not adequately quantified and not documented works for the customer. Customers is always right. If something is vague, unclear, undefined, it'll work for the customer's benefit. Okay, so as a project manager, we want to make sure that everything is wrote, written in detail. For example, uh, you're going to paint the walls, right? But what color? You you or maybe some other thing because of the purpose of that classroom. Maybe it's a psychology classroom or whatever, right? They will use some other other specific color for that. Okay, so if, just saying painting the walls is not enough, okay? Uh, when there's a personal turnover, it's high, that's a problem as well, right? For example, McDonald's, every time you go drive through, there's a different person probably because turnover rate is really high. So if this is happening in that company or your company as a contractor, that's a big problem because people will bring the information, just bring the information with them and leave the company. If they didn't document somewhere in Google Drive, some you know papers, folders, it's gonna be lost. And sometimes people change in the like that. If project management office manager change, you gotta make sure to contact her again and maybe make a meeting and update her about your project because there will be hundreds of projects she's handling and you want to make sure that she knows yours, right? She's She has the up-to-date latest information about yours. So when personnel turnover is high, be careful about your stakeholders and who changed, okay? You can read those. Let's see, scope. Scope is the basically uh project description again acceptance criteria project deliverables what is excluded what's the constraint you can say the budget of the furnishing classroom is we're looking around twenty thousand, right you gotta say that in the statement of work you can change it later if needed but both parties should agree what's the applicable engineering standards you know there will be screens there will be power so is there any electrical engineering, uh, federal regulations for those things, right? So you got to make sure to build that. Uh, and please, please, please get it signed, get it documented. Sometimes your boss will be traveling to China, to India. He will come back two weeks later, whatever. Make sure he knows it and signs it. If they, if they don't sign it, when months pass and years pass, they will say, I don't know about that project. Well, you will say, you signed it. And he will say, I don't remember signing it. Let's look at it. And then you'll open it up. And really, there is no signature. Okay? So without signing, nothing is official. Almost. Right? Especially project baseline, like scope, statement of work, and all of these things. Okay, let's cover the work breakdown structure in five minutes and then uh, call it. So work breakdown structure in the beginning, I think it was Rakar said, I would uh, divide it to chunks and, and do it one by one, right? So that's, that's that. It's a, 
deliverable-oriented hierarchical decomposition. So it's deliverable-oriented work breakdown structure. There's a work, a big work, right? And how would you deliver this in a hierarchical decomposition? And that's work breakdown structure. Okay. Uh, it helps detail planning. Cost and budget. You can associate a cost and budget for each deliverable. You can link it to objectives, like we said in the beginning. If if what what is the part of the work breakdown structure that will meet that cause, right? And who's gonna do which part? You can also assign those, and yeah, you can do those things. So this is helping. So so that's what it looks like. Okay, so there's a main project. There's a major subsystem, task, subtask, and work package, and activities. So remember in the beginning I said, and last week as well, just installing a tire is not a project. But it can be a part of the project, which I meant it can be one of the activities in the project. right? It can be one of the activities, which is a part of the work package. But it's not a project. right? It's not a project. But it's a part of the project, like installing the tires, right? So that's the levels. There's a project, sub-project, tasks, and work packages and activities. For example, that's another way to show it. So this is called indented, okay? So it's a project. There's a sub-project or subsystem, which is 1011, right? And then task one is 111. So we give unique identifiable numbers to each of them. For example, this project has two major subsystems. One is, uh, wait, one, I guess, 11 has two tasks, 111, and the other one is 112. So it has also two subtasks, 1111, and then 1121. Why is it important to have the identifiable numbers? I want to, the reason is uh, the company share these numbers, like your finance guys, your pro contractor, everybody will share this number. And when we say 1121, the finance, the PMO, the contractor, everyone understands the same thing. Instead of saying that, uh, you know, how much do I have in the account that I'm furnishing the, for the implementation of the computers, especially for the screens? How much do I have? Like, they will say, okay, which classroom, which screen, what's happening? Instead of saying that, we're just going to say this, 112, 112. Can you check how much do I have left in 112, 112? And they'll just understand what you mean. That's why it's important, okay? Okay. That's why the, you can understand the cost. For example, for activities, because it's predictable, you can assign a cost. And then now you can add those up and then assign a cost for the work package and then bring all the work packages together and then assign a cost for the subtask. And then going backwards or upwards, you can estimate the rough budget for the project. Okay, work breakdown is... Structure is help, uh, helping for that. You can also say, if that's an IT work package, you can say, okay, IT department, uh, John Abril will, will handle that. And if this is the furniture, furnishing the classroom, you can say, Meng Wang will handle that, right? So that's that also makes your job easier and you can assign works to people. And you can estimate the cost and also duration. If this is taking 10 days, if this is taking five days, probably this work package is taking 15 days. If this is taking, the other one is also 15 days, probably that subtask is, uh, or the task one is taking 15 plus 15, 30 days, you understand? And then how many subtasks you have, probably your project will take 60 days. You can have a rough planning, okay? So it's really, really helpful for all these aspect, aspects, okay? And this is gonna be your assignment. But there's other forms. These are graphical. You will mostly see this one. Oh, it's 12, 16, it's okay, I'm wrapping up. You can also list like this one, or 
show it graphical or as mind map. Right, mind map. And waterfall too. Yeah, just one more thing. Think about to plan the remaining steps. So now you already did thought about the scope, statement of work, work breakdown structure. We talked about it. And now as a project manager, what should be your next step, right? 